Nyla Dixon, who's uh, our costume designer, did a, an incredible job. We set up a, um, a sewing room for her at Stone Street Studios, which used to be an old paint factory. And uh, she had her 40 seamstresses working in there, creating over 19,000 costumes. And it's not merely creating costumes. Um, that's far too easy a concept than what she actually had to tackle. It was very collaborative, Lord of the Rings. The fact that Richard really had been developing the concepts for Lord of the Rings, a lot of things were already in train before the wardrobe department ever showed up on the doorstep. I would say it probably took me a good three months to actually get how huge and complex this was. Because when I stepped on board, I don't think even I, who'd been doing, you know, quite big costume shows for quite a while, I don't think we'd grasped it on any level. In an incredibly short period of time, you have to try and absorb an incredible amount of information. As you can see, there's a few frocks in this wardrobe department. The very first thing that you have to do is you've got to break out that script and work out how many costumes are going to be required. So that meant that we had to make the lead actor's costume 10 times, and then we had to make the body double's costume 10 times, and then we had to make the mini-me costume 10 times, and then we had to make the stunt double costume 10 times. So there are about 40 costumes of that one design. What I tend to do is you're always thinking about it. And the breakdown of the script, the budgeting of it, the costumes are moving through your mind all through that time. And there'll be little doodles appearing here and there, and you know, you'll break away from the figures to do some of the research. I looked at every Tolkien book there was. All of John Howe and Alan Lee's illustrations, they suggest rather than say. So my role was to take that suggestion and say what they were wearing. The jacket, the shirt, yeah. and the trousers right. last night yeah. on this one. Yeah. Everything about the Hobbits, um, descriptive-wise, was these very country, and I wanted to use a lot of that sort of 18th century design style, a little frock coats, the waistcoats, all of those things that are really quite, uh, English, and that naturally, with these big feet, uh, took me to the idea of chopping off their trousers, so that they're kind of wearing these wacky little half-mast pants. When it came to the character Frodo, I wanted to separate him out and make him seem a bit more of a young gentleman. So, in that sense, we dressed him in velvets, but still had all the rougher elements that the hobbits had in general. It absolutely made me feel more like a hobbit, especially with the feet on and the wig. It just, it had that hobbit image. So the clothes were kind of essential and, you know, it would be the first thing I'd put on in the day that would begin my process into being a hobbit. The Aragorn costume. We workshopped that one so much with Vigo. Nyla was wonderful and that she allowed me to be part of that process, you know, so that we could give the character and give Pete or something first and foremost that visually appealed to him and felt right, but for me, was comfortable. We put a lot of detail into this because the idea is that for the character, for Vigo as an actor, as he puts on this costume, layer by layer, he is putting on that character. And that, to me, is a really essential part of being a costume designer, that you can aid a performer in becoming that character for a day. The idea was that this was a man of um, great travel, so it needed to be very flexible, and it needed to look like this guy had slept in any cave or crevice or, and traveled great distances. Vigo Mortensen, who played this character, really was um, into this idea that he himself had repaired it when it, you know, when it starts to sort of come apart. It's got certain sort of medieval um, ideas in this attached sleeve, which I actually think is a very practical thing as well. I mean, if it gets too hot, if it's summer and this person's traveling, it, it does have the idea behind it that this can be detached 
and then just whipped back on. It was a choice of mine to go for this really beautiful green, which a lot of discussion about this costume is it's black. Well, it's not, let me tell you. This is a beautiful licorice green color. We thought it was really important to have some pieces on him that told a different story to this rough, traveling, um, fighting man. And it's in places like this that we felt that we could just slip in um, the sense that he came from or was given things that were much more regal. With the elves, I wanted the Rivendell elves to feel different to the Lothlorien elves. How we went about that was a slight colour shift. There's a bit more colour around the Rivendell elves and around the Lothlorien elves. And other than that, the design um, ethic of both is very similar. What I was looking for was the sense that these people were not of this earth, this Middle Earth. He wanted the sense that these people f sort of floated through the landscape. So I hung all the elf costumes off the tops of their bodies, so giving them as much length as I possibly could to accentuate this idea that these elves were much taller than man. Galadriel is the ultimate elf. She is our most white, our most beautiful, our most elegant, and most of Kate's dresses have this very, very slight drape around the neckline. Um, again, these really huge sleeves, again, a lack of jewelry other than what are considered important pieces to the story. But we used the most glorious beaded fabrics that we could get our hands on. And for the men, you do want them to have an incredible presence. So we went for quite a sort of high collar, smooth hanging and these huge sleeves that the idea when they lifted up their arms that they would fall back and under the sleeves are these really beautiful brocades that have got quite a lot of um, metal thread in them, which of course gives you that fabulous glisten. I wanted a relationship between the elven costumes and the wizards, because I think there is a relationship between those two. With Saruman, I wanted to create the sense this is the head of this order. I wanted a grandness, and I also wanted him to have the stature of an elf. This is the costume of Saruman the White, um, who is played to perfection by Christopher Lee. The concept behind this um, costume was to give it as many textures as we possibly could, because when you've got a character who's called Saruman the White and he's going to be in um, white robes, we needed to get some sense of definition happening to, to that costume. And so the way we went about it was to use different textures in the fabrics themselves. So um, whether it's the linens in this underneath piece, these incredible brocades here. Um, and then we went to a silk, which has got quite a lot of pattern in it. And a lot of these sorts of things don't come up on camera in a huge way, but what they do is they just give it much more life. It's also slightly worn. It wouldn't be brilliant, glowing white. It couldn't be after thousands of years or hundreds of years. So they were very clever there. They said it must look not exactly shabby, but worn. We've really aged this costume down. It's quite extreme at times. You know, like we've actually sort of put quite a bit of life into that breakdown. You can see, you know, it's starting to get ever so slightly threadbare in places. And Again, looking for elements that were going to create that sense of age. He's been a wizard for a long time. It would be wise, my friend. Tell me, friend, when did Saruman the Wise abandon reason for madness? There's a lot of drawings of Gandalf. In fact, he is the one who appears in more images than anyone else in the most defined way. In the discussions with Peter, Peter constantly referred to a drawing of John Howe's. And I went, why don't we see if we can make this come off the page? The actual gown of Gandalf came together really, really easily. 
There's lots of hand stitching on it. There's lots of men's in it. The idea was that this man needed to look like he never took this costume off. You know, we liked that idea of bits of twig and leaf caught up in it. I was always concerned that there should be mud on the fringes of the uh, long robe. And if he'd been riding, that there should be splattered uh, mud further up the costume. Then we began work on this hat. Now, I have this fabulous milliner who works with me, Hayley May. So we developed it to a point where Pete felt that we were, you know, we all were feeling that we were getting there and waited for Ian McKellen to arrive. I mean, I can still remember the look on Ian's face as the hat was handed to him. I mean, he's such a fabulous man, and he just, there was just this imperious kind of, hmm, like this. And then he popped it on his head. And it's, it's one of those magical moments where even Ian himself had to admit that suddenly Gandalf was in the room with us. Just because that was her intent, is to make this. Forget any other movies that she's done. Forget whatever movies you've done. You're here, you're playing this character. Let's make this work. And let's make it look interesting as well. And she did that.